Kelly with you. We'll just have, um, can we have uh, the guitar on, please? And Albie's on this side. Thank you. In your programs, again, you'll see the account of um, Jesus' birth. But if you really take a look at the real reason for the season, it's always about Jesus Christ. They meant to that. It's not about uh, Macy's having a sale or Black Friday or whatever it is, or shopping after Christmas to get the bargains. When Jesus came, there was no bargain. There wasn't any afterthought. God gave, God bless you. <laughs> and God gave his only begotten son. There's been controversy over recent, uh, recent years about some misdirected people trying to take Christ out of Christmas, trying to take um, prayer out of public schools. But when tragedy happens, guess what? They call for prayer in public places. They call upon the name of Jesus, not Buddha, not Muhammad, but the name of Jesus Christ. Their humbug attitudes okay, is the devil's attempt to take Christ out of Christmas. They can try, but God's joy said, you know what? The gates of hell will not prevail over my church. So Christians, we celebrate today, no matter what you're going through. If you take a look at this picture above here, it's about, you know, the gift of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen? That's really important. We celebrate Christmas in order to rejoice over the most precious gift God gave us. Priceless. The birth of guys is a gift from God. It came in some simple wrappings. It wasn't ornate. And it came, even though we didn't deserve that gift, he gave it to us anyway because he loved us so much. God chose a young teenage girl named Mary and impregnated her through the Holy Spirit. I wonder this ultimate gift that God overshadowed her with. I wonder if Mary really knew, really knew what she was about to give birth to. The lyrics to my favorite Christmas song, one of my favorites is Mary, did you know? It says here, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is the Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Mary, did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child of yours is the great I am. Thank you. 
kiss your little baby You kiss the face of God Marriage is, you know Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a great introduction. Huh? If you only knew what Jesus Christ meant, what turmoil God has had in his heart to give his only begotten son as a Christmas gift for all of us. Christmas was never an afterthought. It was a forethought. It was a front of God's mind that God so loved us that he was willing to give his best. This is what Christmas is all about. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus came near to us so we could get near to him. Once we realize that fact that God gave his best, I tell you what, you will change your heart. Christmas is more than tinsel or shopping or, or mall crawling or gifts or whatever you're thinking of. Maybe I can do a, you know, one less minute shopping today at the swap meet or something. All of that is good, uh, but you know what? Not even close to the twinkling of our Father's eyes. Have you ever seen or experienced something that just overwhelmed you, that just took your breath away? There are no words that come close to describing what your eyes have seen, saw, your ears have heard, your nose has smelled. It was something that caused you to get more than this chicken skin experience. A lot of people think that accepting God, you have this chicken skin stuff, okay? It's far more than that. It's an inner joy, an inner peace, knowing that you know. You know, when you know, you know, you know. I tell you what, okay, you tell, you know, the world can give you whatever he wants to negatively, but inside of you, you have such a faith beyond understanding that you got it. No matter what, you got it. It takes your breath away. It could be the first time you stood at the edge of Waimea Canyon. I remember we went to Kauai for the first time. Our kids jumped from the cars and started to chase chickens all over the place. But we stood at that turmoil. Wind just blew against our face, and we look at, wow, 
God, you good, man. You're really good. Now, how about uh, that uh, you could go... Have, any, anybody seen the sunrise in Haleakala? Early in the morning, it's freezing. And you venture up there, and you just see the rising sun over the Haleakala crater. What a, what a wow factor. Or going to the North Shore and watching surfers Okay, challenge this huge surf at the pipeline or at Sunset Beach or wherever. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, the multicolored sky sunsets over Makakilo. Isn't that cool? You watch that, you just go, wow. And you look at the skies, you know, our kids are apt to taking a look at that, and they always say, Dad, Mom, you got to take a look at this. The Vogue has its privileges. When you look at the sunsets, you just go, wow, wonderful. Isn't that? God must be Filipino, yeah? You see oranges and pinks and yellows all mixed up together, but it is awesome. It's really awesome. So I think God is a little bit Filipino. Praise God. Everybody say hallelujah. Okay, all of you are promoted. <laughs> How about, um, have you seen it in a cloudless sky? Lily and I was, would love to go down to uh, Sandy Beach on a clear night and lay down on the beach and look up and see all of those shooting stars coming across the eastern skies. Isn't that cool? Yes, we do live in a in the most beautiful places in the world, but most of us don't take advantage of this beauty God has placed us in. We were playing golf, and Keith and I were sitting down, and we are looking at things, and he just said, you know what, thank you, Jesus, for placing us right here in Hawaii, the most beautiful place in the world, paradise. What humbling moments but God does this over and over and over again. And every day is different. Every day is spectacular. This is what the Bible says in Psalms 19, 1 through 4. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. No matter where you are in the world, went to the Philippines, we looked up in the skies, you look in Bali, you look in California, the skies are gorgeous. You want to feel insignificant? One day go out by yourself and just look up. And God so loved the world, the creator of all the universe, this little Pakanini place called Earth, this little place called Hawaii Kai, God came down to me in 1984 to save me from my demise. God so loved me. Why do I love Jesus Christ? It's because he loved me first. And he prepared a place. Maybe, just maybe something in your personal life, like seeing and hearing your child enter, the, enter earth for the first time and taking his breath and crying. I saw all of my children being born. I cut the umbilical cord. They call me Dr. Nando. Plenty of kids, that's why. But my daughter, Rama, when she was born, Lilia cut the umbilical cord. Right after that, I grabbed her, and I dedicated Rama to the Lord after she was born. The miracle of life. Or how about welling up with pride when your kids graduated with honors, or just graduated, amen? <laughs> or being recognized for something they achieved well. Or paying off your last bill and being debt free. How chicken skin would that moment be in your life? Would that be something to celebrate? Something of unspeakable joy or something that is so tragic that it rips your heart apart. It overwhelms you when you say, God, why? Sometimes we don't have the answers, but we have an awesome God that will redeem anything. When I took a look at a tragedy that happens, I just went, I said, God, why? He says, my ways are not your ways. I'll redeem everything. All tragedy I'll use for my triumph. Less breath here, first breath with the Lord. To be absent in the body is to be present with God. Instantly as the kids died, whoever died, guess what? Jesus welcomed them into heaven's gates. That's our assurance as Christians. 
Today I speak about a gift, about this inner joy with overwhelming. In spite of whatever you're going through, I want you to disengage a little bit today. Some of you are traveling to the mainland. Congratulations to be with parents, to be with family, to be with Disengage yourself for a moment. Focus in on what Jesus Christ says. Some of you are worried about your bills, broken cars, broken brakes, whatever it is. All four cars broke at the same time. But you know what? We praise God anyway. And we have great friends who can fix brakes. It's that things, you know, the tragedy can turn into triumph. God is in control whether you know it or not. He's in control of your life. What is out of control is our obedience to God. And this is why we needed Jesus Christ to be born. But let's first recognize something very important. God said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in your midst. So Jesus Christ sits here right now in our midst. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, come. Minister to those who are here, Father, in a very special, intimate, personal way. That the words that I speak comes directly from your heart to mine. And your words that I speak is, are your words, Father. Take the attention off of me, but onto Jesus Christ. My message today, in the past three weeks, I gave messages about the gifts that you can give our Father that will make him smile. Something that is, uh, you know, priceless, not from your pocketbooks, okay? It's not necessarily from our bank accounts or our credit cards. It's something that you give like your kids gave you that ash cream gave with the imprint of their hand. Remember those? How about that Picasso face that they drew of you? Your eye was up here, your mouth was over, was all kapakahi all over the place. But guess what? You framed it. Why? Because it was given to you with the deepest aloha from your children. That make you smile. My dad, one of the, the first funeral I did as a, as a pastor was my dad's funeral. But I loved him so much because dad, we always say, dad, dad, what you like for Christmas? Nothing. And he truly meant that. He didn't want anything. He was just satisfied that his children were together with him at Christmas time just to break bread and to laugh and to eat. But there was something priceless that we knew that he really liked, and it was for dad only. San Francisco sourdough bread and Dungeonese crab. Woo, doggy, yeah. So every Christmas we'd go and we'd go look, look for the, the, the crab that he liked. Then we would wrap it in a real kapakahi kind. Sometimes it would be newspaper. Sometimes it would be old packages. Sometimes we put tire wire around it and all. So we tried to fool dad, but we couldn't fool dad. So he was the, always the last one to open up his gifts. And he had all of these stickums, ribbons, and put them on his bullhead like mine, all over the place. And what we, all our kids used to watch. Oh, Dad's going to open it, right? And he knew when he opened up the Dungeonese crab, his eyes twinkled, right? He goes, oh, I like this one. Every Christmas, oh, I like this one. And it was for Dad only. Nobody else would eat it. Hands off. I miss my dad and my mother too. My kids know that what twinkles my eyes is sunny side chocolate cream pie. Hint, 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 hint. Oh, I can eat the pie by myself. They buy two of them. One is for dad only. And if they can steal a piece or two of the second one, you know, go for it. But, you know, I dive in that one first. <laughs> I love it. Okay? I don't want anything. I have everything that I need. I have a wonderful God that loves me. I have a beautiful life, wife that has... Uh, that's been with me for 28 years. I have wonderful children that loves the Lord and serves the Lord with all of their hearts. I have a future and a hope. I'm going to heaven. I have a great church and friends that support me. What else do I need? What else? Nothing can compare to the presence of God and the gifts that he gave me. So what I really want to talk about today is something that is really misunderstood. Jesus Christ was wrapped in the swaddling clothes like the Dungeonese cab, right? And what happened is that we, he, we did, don't understand the, the magnitude of this little baby wrapped in this kapakahi wrappings, not in wonderful okay, tinsel and, and, and ribbons, 
and rapping, it was just in a little manger in a dirty cave in a little known place called Bethlehem. Again, God took his place in a manger so that we might have a home in heaven. What an exchange. The creator of the universe, the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings came in swaddling clothes because he loved us so much. He looked at us and said, you know what, these guys have no more chance, man. No more chance without me. So he said, God, you know, Dad, I volunteer. I'll go. I'll be the sacrifice. Why? So that Keith can come to heaven. So Dave can come to heaven. Okay? So Gwen or John or Phil, you can come to be in heaven with him. The second thing I want you guys to know is that God gave us a gift that we don't deserve. We don't deserve being saved, but God says, my love covers a multitude of sin. While we were still sinning, while I was still sinning, God came to save me because he loved me so much. He exchanged my sin for his son. Can you imagine that? The creator of the universe said, my only begotten son, I'm going to exchange that. I want you with me. I can't even wrap my mind around that. So the ultimate gift that whoever believes in him shall not perish is my gift to you today. That ultimate gift I want to transfer from my heart to yours. Ultimate. What does that mean? The best of the best. The final, the extreme, the utmost, the everlasting. The second is a more unusual word that comes with that. It's called serendipity. Oh, man, I'm... What a word, serendipity. It means an unexpected or unplanned pleasant surprise, specifically an accident. You find something good or useful, not specifically looking for it. It's just like I was looking for this pants. Usually you see used jeans and all that, right? Guess what? I took this pants, I started to iron it, and I found money inside. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Serendipity. I put it in there, and now I'm $60 richer <laughs> cool yeah when you say i don't know when i put it maybe when was the last time you used spence i don't know but there was serendipity i cleaned davin's car yesterday we, you know cleaning it out we fixed the brake cleaning it out and guess what i went underneath it so what is this stuff dangling it's the key he lost i found it <laughs> while i was cleaning the car serendipity so my wish for you today is that this christmas you'll receive god's ultimate gift and you'll enjoy the serendipities of heaven. Things that you'd never planned, God is going to blow your mind for the rest of your lives and for eternity. That's what God says in his presence. Now, here's an undisputable truth. Nothing or no one on earth can compare or even God come close to what God has given to us. God gave us Jesus Christ's personal presence in your life. When you accept him, he dwells inside of you. He never leaves. He never forsakes you, no matter what. He doesn't divorce you at all. Think about that. He is committed to you for eternity. He gave you his only begotten son, his very best gift. If you believe him in him, this ultimate gift okay, is for each of us, each of you living, sitting here, whether Whatever you claim you are, an atheist, God is for you. We're created by the same God. Okay? Notice that uh, the Mayans were wrong. Hallelujah. We're still here. Right? Think about that. God says in his word that only he knows. God knows. Even Jesus doesn't know when Jesus is, when he's going to return. So in the meantime, what do we do? Just take up space. Or start reaching people for Jesus Christ so none shall perish. What is really important is that this, whoever believes and receives him shall not perish but have eternal life. Those who receive this gift will enjoy God's intended blessings and the serendipity blessings for eternity in a place, your final resting place, heaven. I didn't see it. The Bible said it. The Bible describes Heaven rewards this way. 1 Corinthians 2.9 No eyes has seen, no ears has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Want to blow your mind? 
Waimea Canyon, not even close. Big surf on the North Shore, not even close. Childbirth, not even. Plenty of money, payoff, yet, not even close. Because God owns everything and is willing to give it to us for those who receive it. So sometimes when I see Christians, and you know what, they're so downtrodden, in other words, so sad, oh, woe is me. Man, I tell you what, Christians, you should be the most joyous people in the world. In spite of whatever you're going through, this is just temporary. We're just passing through. We're citizens of a place called heaven. When you arrive there, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's going to blow your minds. Why? Because we have a finite mind that we can think about an infinite God. Wrap your mind around it. The creator of the universe has more for us than we can ever imagine. Do you know of anything that increases in value every single year? Okay. Some people say gold, silver, diamonds, 401k, uh, don't work. Investments, uh, real estate, uh, we just got a real estate assessment. Oh, my goodness. It went down in value. Isn't it crazy? You know what up in value? My salvation. Huh. God loves me better every single day. But today I want to speak about something greater of anything. You can take advantage of it today if you want. No money can buy this. It is priceless and is yours for the asking. You don't have to beg for it. All you have to do is receive it. The Bible tells us of a story of two Jesus disciples. I love this. It went to the temple to pray when they encountered a lame man. Remember that in Acts 3 and 1 and 5. Let me read that just a little bit, and you'll see what happens here, the interaction. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he put, he put us uh, beside the temple gate, the one called Beautiful Gate. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. Look who I. I like that. Pay attention. The layman looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of the, of the Nazarene, get up and walk. Let me translate that for you. When I read that, I got really excited. A lame man wanted Peter and John to give him some money to live on. Being a lame man, he couldn't work, so the only alternative that he had was to beg for money. Okay, not like these guys on the street corners, you know, holding up signs. Okay, some of them are legitimate at the stoplight, some aren't. Okay. When I see some of them, I said, you know what? Hmm, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Do something. Don't just have a hand up. Let God give you a hand up. He had to depend on others so he could live. It must have been really horrible, yeah? It must have been so miserable and humiliating, okay? filled with pain and suffering. And no, 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 no. Future and hope. This is what, what his life was going to be till he mocked it, till he died. He didn't have anything for a better future. Unfortunately, many of us suffer from the same kind of infirmities. It comes in a variety of forms and shapes, though. Some have lived in some sort of physical ailment. Some have been permanently injured both by emotional or, or relational abuse. There are those who are facing some tremendous financial crises in your life or heart-wrenching family issues, infirmities. Infirmities come in, again, different shapes and forms, whatever it is, it is. And there are others who have an infirmity but don't know that they have one. They deny it. Most of these circumstances cannot be cured with any amount of money, but it can be cured with a spiritual intervention, a spiritual healing that will change the course of your life. Peter and John didn't have any money to offer this lame man, but what they had was something better. Something was far more valuable and more powerful. It was something that would be a cure for his affliction, a priceless gift in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. Along with physical healing, he offered him a serendipity gift of God's grace, his power, his presence, his love, his joy, and peace of mind. Anybody need some peace of mind? 
How many of you have worried about something in your life? Some of you worry about money, some of you work, worrying about a job, okay, some of you worrying about graduating, some of you worry about worrying. Amen? But God says worry doesn't add anything to your life, so just trust me with your life. All things are possible with me. A gift was presented to him that had potential to give him more than he could ever imagine. You know what he did? He accepted the gift in faith. Not really knowing what was about to happen to him. He just received it. He was healed from his lifelong infirmity and a sense of gratitude overwhelmed him. And he started to start praising God. I remember when I accepted God, there was nothing. I said, oh, that's all. I didn't feel this inner sense, but it took me a little while. Inch by inch. Scripture by scripture, prayer by prayer, moment by moment, nothing can take this inner joy from me right now. Why? I know. I know. If I should die now, I'm promoted. Amen? To be absent in the body, to be present with Christ. I have that kind of assurance. I don't know what your infirmity is, but I do have the antidote. I do have the cure. I do have the answer in the name of Jesus. There's another story in the Bible about a lame person. I love this part too. Man, I read this and it just gave me so much hope. In John 5, Jesus returned to Jerusalem inside a city near the Sheep Gate was a pool of Bethesda. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him, he knew he had been ill for a long time. But he asked him, would you like to get well? What? I can't, said the sick man, for I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water bubbles up, Someone else always gets ahead of me. Anybody cut in your line? Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping, sleeping mat and began to walk. you got to do something when God offers you a gift. Okay, to be very truthful, when I first read this, it didn't make any sense to me at all. Jesus obviously knew the man was sick for 38 years. How long is your 38 years? He could provide the healing for him. He knew that. So why did he ask this obvious question, would you like to get well? Maybe there are people who would rather be sick than be healed. I know some people like that. Maybe it's easier to spend or to depend on others rather than take responsibility for your own life. Or maybe you just don't know that any better and you accepted your present situation as your norm. Your new normal. Do you know people like that? They could have so much more, but you know what? Ah, oh, that's okay. Da, 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 da. You no, know, Jesus loves me. This I know. They can quote scriptures, but God says, I have something better for you. Do you want to get well? But Jesus comes along, takes all the excuses away, presents them a gift, the answer, and the cure. This Christmas message, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the same message that motivated God to give his only begotten son over 2,000 years ago. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is steady. He never changes his mind. He never changes his, his word. We got to change our theology to meet his standards. Let me repeat this. John 3, 16, God so loved you and me that he gave his gift of his son, Jesus. Whoever believes in him and receives his gift shall not perish but have eternal life, an ultimate priceless gift of salvation. This whole Christmas message is about that. The presence of God, nothing can compare to it, absolutely nothing. The assurance of going to a place whereby God goes. There are many rooms in my father's mansion. I go and, and I prepare a place for you. 
Would you like to get well? Think about it. Would you like to give all of your infirmities to Jesus Christ so that he can be the cure, the antidote, the answer to whatever is, is troubling you, whatever it is, Christ first. God is presenting you with this gift through his son, Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation, the greatest miracle in the world. It's not standing up and healing whatever illnesses that you have is accepting the Lord in your life and letting him control it. And he'll take you from glory to glory. Remember, a gift is not a gift unless you receive it and accept it. If I give you a gift and you don't, if you don't open it up, you reject it, and you know what? The potential to bless you is gone. But a gift is never wasted. It goes to somebody else. Uh-oh. When I was presented this gift of, before I became a Christian, I laughed. I made fun of Christians while I was playing tennis at Cocoa Head Park. They were going to church. I was, oh, these holy rollers. Man, look at these guys. Da, 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 da. And I'm playing tennis because they're very good at tennis. I played tennis six, seven days a week if I could, right? But one day, one of my friends said, hey, no, what are you laughing at me? Why don't come? Don't give lip service, brother. Just come. Come once. That's all. That was 28 years ago. I've never missed church. 28 years. I became a pastor. How do you figure that? <laughs> From making fun, now I have a future and hope. Trying to tell my friends who are making fun of me. Hey, brother, you know what I mean? Come, just come. One time. See if God doesn't change you. But if you say yes to God, this is what the Bible says. Romans 10, 9 to 12. If you Say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved from the punishment of sin. Amen. Man, that's really exciting. When we believe in our hearts, we are made right with God. And the holy writing says no one who puts his trust in Christ will ever be put to shame. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved from the punishment of sin. Anybody want to be saved? Think about that. What if I'm wrong? A lot of people say, you know, uh, no, no, you know, uh, geez, you know, uh, what if you're wrong? I say, if I'm wrong, we just wasted a little time here on earth. But if, brother, what if you're wrong? Uh-oh. The rest of eternity. Uh-oh. There's another truth that we can't avoid. We will all physically die one day. Anybody going to live forever physically? No. Right? You know, all these beautiful skin, deep beauty is one day going to fade away. But God sees you and he smiles because you are his creation. Your souls will live forever. Where will you live? And you got a choice. Remember, I always say this, eternity is too long to be wrong. Amen? Amen? If you want to accept God's gift, as our praise and worship team just comes up here. Albie, please, would you come? And our team? If you want to accept this gift, what do you have to do? John 4, 6 says, 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No other religion, no other theology, nothing. I don't care who you claim to be, what religion you claim to be. We're all created by the same God. Amen? And he said, you want to go to heaven? Just come on to me. Matthew 11, 20, he said, Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens or infirmities, and I will give you rest. Anybody tired? Anybody sick and tired of being sick and tired? If you come to that place, God says, come to me, and I will give you rest. We all need to be rescued from this present world. Amen? Anybody drowning in this world of sorrow, of bills, of worry 
We all need a rescuer. I close my Christmas message with this passage and a song. Galatians 1, 3 and 4 says, May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father planned. Okay, this is what's important. Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God of our planned, in order to rescue us from this evil world which we live. Anybody need rescue? I want you to close your eyes. I want this song to minister to your hearts. Nothing. 
Some of people he as the Father and Savior accepted you as, as the Lord and Savior yet. If that is you, this is the day the Lord has made, especially for you. This Christmas can be a red letter day for you. In the quietness of your heart, in your personal privacy, all you have to say is, Jesus, come. Forgive me for my sins. I exchange my sins for your salvation. I love you so much. I just don't understand, but I receive you in faith. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to be left behind. I need you, Jesus. Come to my you to stay and just have a little more refreshment time with a lot of goodies over there.